Virtual and augmented realities are seeing a surge right now, and these days the technology is even being used for ultrasounds. We spoke with CNET senior reporter Shara Tipkin about that and more in this week's Tech Tuesday segment. They called butterfly networks and they make this sort of device that you can use with your smartphone to do an ultrasound. And the idea is that uh, doctors can carry these around with them if they can't have a full ultrasound machine. Um, they could maybe guide patients through this at home how to use it. So the idea is this works with Apple's augmented reality feature. So what it does is it gives you 3D directions on how to actually move the ultrasound wand. So you can get things like um, pregnancy ultrasounds or um, COVID-19 ways to look at the, the lungs. This doesn't mean we're all going to be doing our own ultrasounds at home, but it's kind of a nice way for doctors now to kind of supplement telemedicine with something that's a little more high tech, a little more difficult than just kind of a video call. So the FDA has a lot of regulations right now where um, things that normally you couldn't do are now allowed for emergency uses. So this is something that, you know, it, it isn't like we would normally be doing this all the time, uh, but it, it is a really good thing right now when everybody's trying to avoid going to an office and, um, you know, trying to monitor our health while we're at home. Apple bought this startup called NextVR, and you probably never heard of NextVR, but if you own a VR headset, you might have used its technology. So basically, it partners with uh, sports organizations, live events, to basically stream these to your VR headset so you feel like you're at an NBA game or at Wimbledon when you're not actually there. So Apple bought them. Uh, they've been working on augmented reality and virtual reality for a very long time. We haven't seen anything from them yet. Um, the belief was they were going to have something this year, but now that's kind of looking a little less likely. Even before the pandemic, it was looking less likely. Uh, but we should see something from them in this area. And this is really a big statement. Hey, we are really interested in virtual reality. The way virtual reality worked kind of in the early days and what we're all kind of used to is you put on this huge headset, these goggles, and then you have controllers in your hands. Um, I'm not a gamer, and for me, using controllers is always kind of spotty. I'm very inaccurate with them. So the idea is the Oculus, you'd be able to use your hands as the controllers. So there's going to be some games, um, you know, applications that will work with this. So when you enter those, you'll be able to use your hands to navigate or, um, you know, use them as a sort of replacement for physical controllers in some regard. It doesn't mean you can totally throw your controllers away. It's not going to work for everything. I'm sure it's not going to be entirely seamless right away, but it's kind of moving towards making virtual reality just a little more realistic. You know, if we're living in this virtual world, interacting in this virtual world, you want to just be using your hands. You want to be acting like a normal person. You don't want to be holding, you know, bulky controllers and, you know, have a large cable tethering you to a computer. So, you know, it's all just trying to make virtual reality more realistic. Virtual reality is one of those things like uh, the Nintendo Switch and gaming. And it's just really kind of seeing a moment right now where a lot of people are buying these and deciding to try them out. We're all sitting at home, so might as well test out a new kind of technology or entertain kids or, you know, whatever it is, but kind of the promise of living in a virtual world, working in a virtual world, that just hasn't really happened. We have not seen that. And if there was ever a time for us to have these sort of virtual workplaces where you could be sitting at a conference table, talking to your colleagues and feel like you're actually next to them, it would be now, but we just aren't really there. Uh, the headsets are still expensive. They're you know, still pretty heavy. You don't want to wear them for very long. So there's still quite a few technological hurdles to us really kind of going all in on virtual reality. And, you know, all of the companies who play in this area are working really hard on that and trying to make it so these are lighter, so you can live in this world for more than an hour, but we're just not quite there yet. And CNET joins us every Tuesday right here on CBSN Bay Area for a new Tech Talk with CNET.